In Freemasonry and Religion, the Grand Lodge of England wrote, Freemasonry is far from indifferent to religion. Without interfering in religious practice, it expects each member to follow its own faith and to place above all other duties his duties to God by whatever name he is known. Though it is not a religion, the fact that Freemasonry encourages religion and worship of God presents a hole in Keith's stance that the Zeitgeist movement is trying to induct people into a satanic one-world religion using Freemason ideology. We've been separated from the oneness, and that's what religion exploits, that people have this yearning to be part of the overall one again. So they exploit that. They call it God. They say he has rules. And I think it's cruel. I think you can do it absent religion. This is why I go after religion, because religion is the biggest, most offensive, stagnating element, systematic institution that there is. You cannot have a whole group of people believing in something that stops their intellectual growth. That is, does that mean they need to be eradicated? Of course not. They need to be educated. Christianity, along with all other theistic belief systems, is the fraud of the age. It serves to detach the species from the natural world and likewise each other. It supports blind submission to authority. It reduces human responsibility to the effect that God controls everything and in turn awful crimes can be justified in the name of a divine pursuit. And most importantly, it empowers those who know the truth but use the myth to manipulate and control societies. The religious myth is the most powerful device ever created and serves as the psychological soil upon which other myths can flourish. Right off the bat, we have established that Peter Joseph is in fact in no way trying to convince anyone to join any religion, let alone a one world religion. So, Keith is wrong there. Now, let's address this idea that Peter Joseph is promoting a one world government. World unification, it's not world government at all. It's an entirely different ideological disposition based on what's available on the planet, what the society needs. World unification, working toward common good for all human beings and without anyone being subservient to anyone else, without social stratification, whether it be technical elitism or any other kind of elitism eradicated from the face of the earth. The state does nothing because there is no state. Because there is no state. Government and the concept of the state will eventually be outgrown entirely and replaced by an objective system of global resource management and technological organization. So we have now established that while the movement is advocating the uniting of the people all around the world, it is not advocating a one world government. In fact, Peter is saying we will outgrow the government. That really should be enough said, but we all know it's not, so I will go ahead and address Keith's most ridiculous point. Keith points out the Illuminati symbolism appearing in the film, as David Icke would point out shape-shifting reptilian symbolism appearing outside a building. Apparently displaying symbols of awareness, like the all-seeing eye and the sun pyramid, makes the film an Illuminati plot, along with CBS, Target, The Lord of the Rings, The X-Files, Lost, Jeepers Creepers, and Bride of Chucky. Hell, even my YouTube channel must be an Illuminati plot. After all, it's not like the symbolism existed before the existence of the Illuminati. Oh wait, yeah, actually it did. In the end though, it turns out it is not so much Zeitgeist sources that Keith has a problem with. It is the peaceful message of unity and progress. Here is the statement of the Zeitgeist movement which proves my thesis, quote, In fact, the only true government that can possibly exist is the earth and its resources. From there, all possibilities can be assessed. This is why an intellectual unification of all countries is needed. That alone is enough to expose Zeitgeist's goals, a one-world system. That's what we're supposed to be fighting as the truth movement. A one-world system. That's what we're supposed to be fighting as the truth movement. Fucking fascist! That's right, Keith is pro-division. He wants to keep the subjugating powers in power. He does not want peaceful unification. He doesn't want freedom. Keith attacks a movement which is advocating abandoning outdated, inefficient ways of doing things. Thus, improving environmental conditions leading to an educated, peaceful, and progressive society. Yet, he supports a religion that is structured around the worship of a raging, slave-owning god 
who not only lays out procedures for properly owning your own slaves, but for properly beating them as well. This temper tantrum throwing god character would torch people for failing to accurately follow his instructions on how to build a fire. He'd wipe out a group of people for whining. He even ordered a man to be stoned to death for gathering wood on the Sabbath. These Israelites, who Yahweh supposedly freed from the Egyptian pharaoh, were immediately forced to begin following the orders of a new slave owner. The common punishment for failing to obey his commands? Death. So long as Keith Truth advocates Christianity and fights peaceful unification, he cannot honestly claim to be fighting for freedom. Anytime someone discredits Christianity, its apologists try to discredit them back with dodges, flawed analogies, quote mining, misrepresentation, fallacious generalization, and other dishonest tactics. There is no reference to theosophists like Helena Blavatsky and Krishnamurti being Satan worshippers outside the realm of Christian conspiracy theorists. The New World Order and the Illuminati are both generalized concepts that conspiracy theorists use as a breeding ground of paranoid theories surrounding the enslavement of a world which is already enslaved. These theories offer only fear and no solutions. Fear of the pagans, Jews, atheists, Christians, Satanists, Muslims, and even shape-shifting reptilians. Now, if people keep fighting change with destructive conspiracy theories and mind-dumbing faith, we will never make any progress. That is why we, the Zeitgeist Movement, must continue to raise awareness and refute defamations. But I can't do it alone, as I have other projects on other subjects which I am doing for this very cause. So I am asking everyone, members of the movement or not, to research the claims made against us. Please, don't take these people at their word. They have their own reasons for wanting to discredit us. Find them, and think for yourself.